Uh, welcome to my first video on the principle of mathematical induction. Um, if you have any questions after the video, you can email me at absolutemathematics at yahoo.ca. Alright, so let's start with our first example. And it says, show that Pn is true for, looks like fun, for n greater or equal to zero. And Pn is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus n equals n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So all mathematical induction is is that it's a way of proving that a math mathematical proposition, in our case Pn, or statement, is true in a mathematical way. So every time you do this, there's going to be three steps. You're going to have the first step, which you verify, second step you assume, and the third step where you prove that your thing is true. So let's start with the first one. So the first one, all you're going to do is you're going to pick an integer that is within the restriction. In our case, n is equal, is greater or equal to zero. And you're going to plug it into our proposition or statement and verify that it's true. So we're going to verify that pn is true when n is equal to 1. So let's do that. So n of, I mean p1 is 1 equal to, and then you're just going to replace n with 1. So 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2. And you can see that 1, 1 plus 1 is 2 times 1 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the left hand side equals the right hand side. So this is true. We just verified if it was true. Now if it didn't equal, if both sides didn't equal each other, then you could stop right there and you could say, okay, well this isn't true, then the whole statement isn't true, and you would stop right there. But obviously your teacher isn't going to make it that easy for you, so you're going to have to continue to the next step. So your next step is that you're going to have to assume something. Okay, well, you might be like, why can't we just stop right there, because that we, we proved it. it's true for one, then it must be true for 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, you're just assuming that. You can't actually say it's true because in some examples, this might, a proposition may work for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but then as soon as you use 6, it doesn't work anymore. So that's why you have to go through all these steps to make sure that doesn't happen. So because we verified the first part, we can assume for the second part that pk, so it's kind of a new proposition, is true for all integers of k greater or equal to zero. So our pk, all you're going to do is you're going to take our pn that we had and you're going to replace it, or you're going to replace the n's with k's. And all this is telling us is that we're assuming it's true, sorry that's a 2, for any integer k greater or equal to 0. This might seem silly or kind of useless at the moment, but it's going to come in handy for our next step, so just hold on. That should be straightforward, and yeah, we'll just move on. You'll see how it comes into play later on. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that because we assume pk is true for any integer, k greater or equal to zero, we have to make sure that it's also valid or true for the integer after that. So what that's going to be is that we're going to prove, prove that pk plus one, so the integer after, is also true for all integers of k greater or equal to zero. So it's going to be the same thing, you're just going to replace the n and your pn here with k plus one. So your pk plus one is going to be one plus two plus three plus dot 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 plus k plus one is equal to k plus one times k plus 1 plus 1, remember there's the plus 1 there, 
divided by 2. Now you have to you have to be careful here because if you don't catch this part you won't be able to continue but you have the term k plus 1 here well each term goes up by 1 so if you wanted the term before 3 you would do minus 1 which is 2 and the term before 2 minus 1 gives you 1 so same thing here when you have k plus 1 if you want the term before you just do minus 1 and k plus 1 minus 1 will just give you k so we're going to write that in. You're going to see why in just a second. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus k plus this term here, k plus 1, is equal to the right hand side, which I'm not really going to touch, except I'm going to put these two ones together. So k plus 2 over 2. So this is what we have so far, and I hope it makes up sense up to this part. I got a new paper. Actually, I'll put this one here and continue. Okay, so now what you have to notice actually, actually before I introduce a new paper, is that we can't do anything else with this expression or this equation because we have this dot 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 here and we don't actually know what that represents. So we have to somehow get rid of this so that we can continue evaluating to see if our left hand side equals our right hand side to prove that it does work. So what, what we can do actually is that we can go back to our PK and we notice that we have this series of terms right here and we also have it right here. So because these are equal to each other we can make this part of PK plus 1 equal to this part of PK. So we're going to put that in right here. k times k plus 1 over 2. Now remember, you still have this k plus 1 term here, so don't get rid of that. You have to make sure you add on to that. And then the right hand side is exactly the same. We haven't touched it yet. Alright, so now we have something we can work with and we can actually develop this and see if the left hand side equals the right hand side and if it does then we know that pk plus 1 is true so let's see if we can do that so we have k times k plus 1 which is k squared plus k over 2 and then we're going to put this over 2 so we can add these two together so it's going to be 2k plus 2 over 2 and then we're going to develop the right hand side so basic algebra here, k squared plus 3k plus 2 over 2. And then I'm just going to finish developing the left hand side and see what we get. So k squared, k plus 2k is 3k plus 2, and this is all over 2. Rewrite the right hand side. And we get exactly the same thing on the right hand side. So you can see that your left hand side is equal to your right hand side. And because of this, you just prove that it's true. So you know that your PN is also true. So you're done. All you have to do is you write by PMI, which stands for the principle of mathematical induction, PN is true for all integers of n greater or equal to zero. And that's all there is to it. Uh, there's a few tricks that you can use for principal mathematical induction, but this is just a basic example and I'll talk more about that in my other videos. Alright, thanks for watching. Remember if you have any questions, uh, just send me an email at absolutemathematics at yahoo.ca. Thanks.